Calvary greetings to you all in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It's a, a blessing to come to you out of the network of churches. This morning we're having prayer breakfast. I'm Pastor Ken Wally and um, uh, we shall be standing in the gap for uh, the body of Christ, for missionaries across the world, for uh, uh, leaders of our various ministries and uh, uh, families and individuals in our communities as we continue the trust for a mighty move of God in the land. Uh, this morning I will be speaking on the subject sounds of lepers, sounds of lepers, and uh, it will be part one. Uh, uh, let us start off by reading a couple of scriptures. First of all, Joel chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 4. Joel chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 4. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Bethuel, Hear this, you old men, and give ear, all you inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. Verse 4. That which the palmer worm hath left hath the locust eating, and that which the locust hath left hath the canker worm eating, and that which the canker worm have left hath the caterpillar eating. Amen. Now let's turn to Second Kings chapter 6 from verse 24. Uh, we'll read all the way th through uh, chapter 7 verse 20. Second Kings chapter 6 from verse 24. And it happened after this that ben Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his army and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and indeed they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for eighty shekels of silver and one-fourth of a cup of dove, dove's droppings for five shekels of silver. And um, then as the king of Israel was passing by on the wall, a woman cried out to him, saying help my lord o king and he said if the lord does not help you where can i find help for you from the threshing floor or from the wine press then the king said to her what is troubling you and she answered this woman said to me give your son that we may eat him today and we will eat my son tomorrow so we boiled my son and ate him and i said to her on the next day give your son that we may eat him but she has hidden her son now it happened when the king heard the words of the woman that he tore his clothes and as he passed by on the wall the people looked and there beneath, underneath he had sackcloth on his body. Then he said, God do so to me and more also if the head of Elisha the son of Shaphat remains on him today. But Elisha was sitting in his house and the elders were sitting with him and the king sent a man ahead of him but before the messenger came to him he said to the elders do you see how this son of a medra has sent someone to take away my head look when the messenger comes shut the door and hold him fast at the door is not the sound of his master's feet behind him and while he was still talking with them there was the messenger coming down to him and then the king said surely this calamity is from the lord why should i wait for the lord any longer second kings chapter 7 verse 1 then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord, thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time a seer of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. So an officer on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Look, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, could this thing be and he said, In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Verse 3. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we'll enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here also, we die. Now therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. 
For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact, their tents, their horses, their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. And when those and when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent and ate and drank, carried from it silver and gold and clothing, and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent and carried some from there also and went and hid it. Then they said to one another, We are not doing right. This day is a day of good news, and we remain silent. If we wait on the morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now, therefore, come, let us go and tell the king's household. So they went and called to the gatekeepers of the city and told them, saying, We went to the Syrian camp, and surprisingly, no one was there, not a human sound, not only horses and donkeys tied and the tents intact. And the gatekeepers called out, and they told it to the king's household inside. So the king arose in the night and said to his servants, Let me now tell you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we are hungry. Therefore, they have gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, when they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and get into the city. And one of the servants answered and said, please let several men take five of the remaining horses which are left in the city. They uh, look, they may either become like the multitude of all Israel that are left in it, or indeed, I say they may become like all the multitude of Israel left from those who are consumed. So let us send them and see. Therefore, they took two chariots with horses, and the king sent them in the direction of the Syrian army, saying, Go and see. And they went after them to the Jordan, and indeed, all the road was full of garments and weapons which the Syrians had thrown away in their haste. So the messengers returned and told the king. Then the people went out and plundered the tents of the Syrians. So a seer of fine flour was sold for a shekel and two seers of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Now the king had appointed the officer on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate. But the people trampled him in the gate and he died just as the man of God had said who spoke when the king came down to him. So it happened just as the man of God had spoken to the king saying, two seers of barley for a shekel and two seer of fine flour for a shekel shall be sold tomorrow about this time in the gate of Samaria. Then that officer answered the man of God and said, Now look, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, could such a thing be? And he said, In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. And so it happened to him, for the people trampled him in the gate, and he died. Praise the Lord. This morning we are speaking on the subject, Sounds of Lepers sounds of lepers and um there uh was a uh an uh, instance in the scriptures uh, uh where there was a famine in the city of samaria a famine in the city of samaria uh, a drought but it was an artificial drought a an artificial drought that was reflective of their spiritual condition, the spiritual condition of the inhabitants of the city of Samaria, uh, because the uh, Syrian army uh, under King Ben-Hadad had come and besieged the entire city of Samaria. So uh, uh, the inhabitants of Samaria uh, uh, did not have access to their farms, which were uh, usually outside the city walls. And um, uh, so they couldn't farm, they couldn't sow, they couldn't reap, they couldn't, uh, uh, food could not come from uh, uh, other places, uh, traders could not come in. The city was surrounded by the Syrian army. And so uh, there was a drought, an artificial drought in Samaria. Uh, uh, now, there was 
a spiritual condition in the city of Samaria. And that spiritual condition had um, 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 degenerated to the degree that this famine had um, manifested, this attack, this besiegement. Now, um, usually uh, 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 before uh, uh, the ultimate manifestation of God's judgment last week, we, uh, uh, we, we, I spoke on the subject of, um, uh, of God's glory. I spoke on uh, how that um, uh, uh, God's glory is his goodness uh, and um, his glory manifests uh, 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 his goodness for those who love him. Uh, but uh, his glory is also his decisions. Um, uh, and um, uh, it's important to, to, to always have the decisions of the Lord uh, on the table of your heart. We spoke about the Ark of the Covenant, which contains the glory, the decisions, uh, which are also the judgments of God. Now, we read this morning in Joel chapter 1 uh, of uh, uh, a condition of of farming that had hit Israel in the days of Joel the prophet. And um, we see a, a, a series of manifestations uh, uh, that take place when there is an infestation of locusts, an infestation of locusts. Now, um, uh, uh, the locust is an insect that goes through four stages of development, four stages of development. And um, uh, uh, usually when uh, a nation or a community is ravaged by the attack of locusts, uh, they devour everything that is green because they come in these four stages of their development as palmer worms, as canker worms, as caterpillars, and as full mature locusts. So uh, the scripture tells us in Joel 1 that um, uh, uh, what the palmer worm has left, uh, that uh, uh, the other stage of locusts, uh, uh, the canker worm have eaten where the canker worm leaves, the caterpillar has eaten where the caterpillar has eaten, the locusts, four stages. And um, when they uh, attack a vegetation, they destroy everything green. They destroy the flowering stage, the seed, the harvest, uh, nothing is left. And um, their testament to how the kingdom of darkness is structured to ravage and destroy uh, a community. The scripture tells us that the uh, uh, devil cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So uh, here the scripture is telling us of how the enemy works to totally destroy the prosperity of a place. And uh, this was a prophetic message of God uh, 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 to me uh, uh, for God's people. Uh, some of you will remember that when the uh, pandemic uh, uh, started uh, in 2020, um, I, I mentioned that that was the beginning of a series of judgments that uh, are being unleashed on, uh, uh, on this earth at this time. And, that, and I said that the pandemic was just uh, the first, the, the, the COVID pandemic was just the first. And um, we see how that even within the pandemic, um, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, it's been uh, one variant after the other, one variant after the other. And then um, as that was coming to an end, we see uh, the, the war in Ukraine, uh, uh, Russia versus Ukraine, that has triggered a global food crisis. 
and um, uh, uh, there is uh, uh, um, economic uh, um, um, hardship that uh, is facing uh, many people across the world uh, right now as we speak. And then we, we here in the United States and in Europe, there are pockets of droughts everywhere. Uh, this morning, I was watching the news and, and, and they said in Massachusetts, in Rhode Island, uh, uh, they're experiencing a drought, even here in the Northeast, uh, 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 the Southwest, uh, the West, pockets of, of, of communities that are experiencing severe drought, severe drought. And um, um, that was how it happened in the city of Samaria. The, uh, the people in the city of Samaria were not paying attention to uh, God's word. They were not paying attention to God's word. Uh, now, um, at every given point in time, God is speaking, God is moving, and God has decisions that he makes, and those decisions bear on our lives here on earth. And whatever we do in life orchestrates sounds, either as an expression of our faith or doubt. Whatever we do in life, we orchestrate sounds in the spirit realm, either as an expression of our faith or doubt. If we have heard the word of God, what we do after we have heard the word of God makes sounds, sounds that align with God's decisions, God's judgments, or sounds that are contrary. So we are either uh, on the side of God uh, and making sounds uh, that align with what God is saying, uh, sounds of faith, actions of faith, works of faith, words of faith, or we are moving contrarywise in which case we experience the judgments of God. Let's, let's read Ezekiel chapter 1, Ezekiel chapter 1 from verse 22 to understand how the glory of God uh, uh, manifests. Uh, uh, and, and here, uh, this is the beginning of Ezekiel's uh, uh, ministry and God is revealing, God revealed his glory to uh, the prophet Ezekiel. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 1 from verse 22, and the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of the terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above and under the firmament were their wings straight, the one toward the other. Every one had two which covered on this side and every one had two which covered on that side their bodies. Verse 24, and when they went I heard the noise of their wings. I heard the noise of their wings. Their wings made a sound like the noise of great waters. As the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, as the noise of an host, when they stood, they let down their wings. So here, God is showing Ezekiel what happens in the spirit realm, these four living creatures that were in God's presence, the scripture says they had wings. And when they went, Ezekiel said, I heard the sound from their wings, uh, the sound that their wings made in relation to the winds, in relation to the winds. That's what in the Old Testament is called the Ruach the breath of God, or in the in the New Testament, the word used in Greek is pneuma, is pneuma, all right? And then he says, like the noise of great waters, like the sound of great waters, are uh, uh, as the elements, as the elements uh, 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 resonate 
with the move of God. Whether it's the Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, uh, whether it's the Lake Mississippi or uh, whatever river it is, the Hudson, the Hutchinson, every element, the mountains, the hills, every element makes a sound that resonates with the move of God. And he says, as the voice of the Almighty, as the voice of God himself, hallelujah, God speaking. And he says, the voice of speech, that means that they are intelligible sounds. They are specific words, messages. It's the declaration of God's judgment. They are not just uh, 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 sounds that are not intelligible, but they are sounds that can be understood because they are clear words. As the noise of an host, it's also a sound of an army, God's army. Hallelujah, the angels of God moving. So we see that the glory of God uh, uh, produces certain sounds that can be heard. And those are the sounds that we hear when a true servant of God brings you a message from the Lord brings you a message from the Lord is because the servant of God is hearing what he has heard, what God has allowed him to hear. That's the message, the basis of the revelation the, that is being taught. And we all have access. Thank God uh, for technology. Uh, whether it's through radio or television or through the internet, there is always uh, uh, a message being preached uh, uh, by a servant of God, a message from God. Hallelujah, like you're hearing right now. And uh, the, uh, 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 that same word is what uh, uh, moves the elements. That same word is what uh, directs the army of God. That same word is God's, contains God's goodness. It's an expression of God's goodness. And at the same time, it's an expression of God's judgment. God's goodness for those who fall in line with the word. As you're hearing the words uh, uh, from this lips of clay, uh, uh, what is it triggering in you? Is it triggering faith? If it indeed triggers faith, then there should be a reflection in your actions, in your words, in your ways after you have heard this message. Now, uh, but if it doesn't trigger faith, uh, then there will be a either an indifference to what you heard uh, and an indifference to what you heard uh, is an expression of doubt because uh, you will walk away after listening to this message still doing things you did before uh, still saying things uh, that you said before still going the ways uh, that are contrary to what you've heard. So uh, there are many people who hear the word of God, but uh, uh, there is no sound of faith that comes out of their lives because they do not allow the word to change the sound. The sound that emanates, that issues out after they've heard the word because they are indifferent and one of the things that god said to me about this generation is a generation that is saddled with apathy indifference towards the word of god indifference towards the scriptures indifference 
to what thus saith the Lord. So uh, Samaria uh, had a prophet living in the city, the prophet Elisha, a great prophet. And the man of God will speak to them and uh, they were indifferent. They were indifferent to the word of God. In fact, they doubted the words that the prophet spoke. They doubted that thus saith the Lord. And we see that in the response of the uh, uh, minister of finance and economic planning. We see his response when Elisha gives a prophetic word. He says, uh, tomorrow by this time, the drought, the artificial drought is going to come to an end. There'll be food in abundance. Food is going to be cheap. Food is going to be cheap. You know, uh, 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 the condition of Samaria at that time was that they, uh, that the drought, the famine was so bad. It was so bad that they started to eat dove's dung. That was what was for sale. There was no food. They killed all their livestock, their uh, uh, beasts of burden, the donkeys, the uh, uh, they had eaten the bodies of the donkey. Now uh, uh, they were eating the heads of donkeys. Very expensive and doves dung because the doves could fly out of the city uh, and go and, and pick up food from outside the city and eat. And when they came and they excreted in the city, that was what was for sale. That was how bad the drought was. But let's let's step back for one minute and think about the how the city got to that point where there was a bad drought by reason of the besiegement of the Syrian army. Scripture says that there were four lepers, explicitly four lepers, who were outside the city gate. Why were these four lepers outside the city gate? Uh, when the people would be indifferent to the uh, preaching of the servant of God, Elisha, uh, uh, the scripture says uh, uh, over and over again, God caused their spiritual condition of doubt of his word, unbelief to manifest as leprosy in one man, as leprosy in one man. Now, uh, when you had leprosy, uh, the priest will examine what kind of leprosy it was. If it was the kind of leprosy that was contagious, uh, uh, you will be uh, excluded from the community. Uh, because that leprosy could affect other people and anything you touched. So this leper was uh, banished uh, 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 to live outside the city walls. So usually such a leper will uh, depend on uh, uh, people who are going out and uh, into the city and um, uh, they will uh, ask for alms and people will, will give them alms uh, for their survival. So the first leper was, was, was thrown out, uh, but because it was kind of like an isolated case of leprosy. It's not your uncle. It's not your auntie. It's not your brother. It's not your father. It's not your mother. It's not your brother, not your sister. Oh, it's just information. But that was an expression of your spiritual condition which God had caused to manifest in one leper. Because leprosy is uh, uh, a condition that separates you from God. You couldn't come to the temple of God when you were a leper. All right. So uh, the first leper uh, was thrown out. Then another person contracted leprosy. 
also contagious, so he was banished out of the city walls. Then there was a third leper, who, a third person who contracted leprosy, he was also thrown out. And then the fourth. All these uh, uh, manifestations, which were a reflection of the spiritual condition of the inhabitants of Samaria, did not alert the consciousness of God's people to know that there was something wrong. And that's exactly what is taking place today. Uh, there was a global pandemic. Uh, I, uh, some of us announced that this was a beginning of a series of judgments. Nobody paid attention. Now, from one variant to the other, uh, strangely, the, the, the coronavirus pandemic uh, is still here. People are still dying. But because uh, for some of us, uh, our brother or sister didn't die, our, none of our parents were impacted, that none of our uh, close relatives or even distant relatives were impacted, um, um, well, we shrug our shoulders. They are isolated cases. So many people died as a result of COVID-19. And uh, those who were impacted uh, uh, feel the gravity of the loss. But for those, and, 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 and uh, sometime this week, I was speaking to someone and, and, and she said to me, uh, um, uh, I haven't been in church for a very long time, uh, uh, but in the midst of COVID-19, uh, um, um, I found my way to church. I dragged myself to church one day. All right, just one day. Uh, but after that, I never went again. So uh, 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 people being indifferent, America being indifferent, people across the globe being indifferent, even though uh, 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 it is uh, a condition, the pandemic was a condition that reflects our spiritual state our spiritual state of apathy and indifference to thus save the Lord, to the messages of that are coming from the servants of the Lord. And then the global logistics problem, and then the, the, the food crisis, inflation, all these uh, seem to be isolated um, 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 incidents, what's taking place in Russia. Uh, well, I don't have a, you may say I don't have a relative who is a, an Ukrainian. Uh, uh, I don't, uh, um, I'm, I still have my job as far, the last time I checked, uh, every member of my family uh, has a job. Um, 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 we're still eating, you know. Uh, um, um, the last time I checked, uh, uh, I went to the faucet and turned it on and water came through. So for those who are in places like Ukraine who are who become victims uh, 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 and those who are experiencing drought in the southwest, in the northeast, in, in, in all across uh, Europe, for them, they are like these four lepers, those who have begun to feel the impact, those who... Uh, uh, are experiencing uh, manifestations that are a reflection of our spiritual condition of apathy. But for those of us who have not yet experienced anything, uh, uh, we cannot relate to the drought. We cannot relate to the wars, we cannot relate to the, uh, 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 to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. We cannot relate because we were never impacted directly. So the, the servant of the Lord uh, 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 gave a word and we see the reaction of the uh, minister of finance. He says, 
even if God should make windows in heaven, it is not literally possible that the drought, the famine, should come to an end in 24 hours. It's not possible. That was the response of the economist, the minister of finance. That was his response. That's what the news media were going to carry around. The scripture says the king leaned on him, depended on him for counsel. That was what the news media was going to carry around. CNN, ABC, uh, uh, MSNBC, all of them. That was the news, Fox. That's the news they were going to carry around. What the uh, uh, economic minister said in response to Thus saith the Lord, the doubt, the doubt. You know, we are already in the season of trumpets. Pay attention to me, we are in the season of trumpets. And the Lord said to me to sound the trumpet, to make an alarm. This is a season in in, in, in the scriptures uh, uh, where we have the feast, we are ramping up to the, uh, the three feasts of uh, the Feast of Trumpets, Atonement, and Tabernacles. Uh, and uh, uh, possibly sometime next week, the flyers are going to be out for that. Uh, but we are already in the season of trumpets. And tr the, the, the season of trumpets was a season where uh, the priests will blow the trumpet so that God's people will come to alignment, come back to alignment, come back to divine order. Align yourselves with God's decisions. That's the call. In Joel chapter 2, uh, the scripture says, verse 1, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, and it is nigh at hand. Hallelujah. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Hallelujah. Blow the trumpet. Make the sound. Let the sound of my glory be heard. Let the sound of my decisions be heard. Let the sound of my judgments be heard. Let it be heard. Let it be heard. Let it be heard. It be heard. And that's the word that is coming from God's servants. And the purpose of God's word is to trigger faith in God's people. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you, if you hear the sound of God's word, it's intended to Orchestrate faith in your life. Faith, not doubt, not indifference, not unbelief. It's supposed to trigger faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse, from verse 1, the scripture says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. God himself operates the premise of faith in the premise of faith in creating this world, in sustaining this world. The scripture says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Whatever good we're going to experience from God, it has to be because uh, uh, we are allowing the word of God to uh, uh, impact what we do, what we say, where we go, when we hear it. 
Faith is the substance of things hoped for. We cannot be indifferent to the word of God and experience the substance of faith. We can't just pacify ourselves that, oh, uh, we've gone to church, we've heard the word of God, or we've, we've heard the preacher on television, or we've heard a message on the internet. No, that's not what counts. Hearing is one thing, but uh, uh, allowing the word to, to, to change what you do, what you say, where you go after hearing the word of God, the sounds that come out of your life must change. The sounds that issue out of your life must change. They must be sounds of faith. In Psalm 89, the scripture says, from verse 15, it says, Blessed are they that know the joyful sound, for they shall walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. In your favor they shall be exalted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's, it's what sound you're hearing and what sound is, is issuing out of your move. So that's why God revealed uh, uh, what happens in his presence to Ezekiel the prophet. He says, when I speak uh, a trickish uh, the the living creatures of my presence and they begin to move and their wings uh, make sounds that resonate with the winds and uh, 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 the waters, uh, the elements, uh, 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 sounds that, that are my voice, my words, intelligible sounds, sounds uh, of my army, uh, my angels, uh, my warring angels, uh, hallelujah. And if you, if you fall in line, uh, oh, with my word, uh, then you will experience the goodness of my word. But if you uh, come contrary uh, to my word, then uh, my army is going to defeat you. Oh, uh, the elements are going to work against you. Uh, 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 the winds are going to be against you. You're going to experience contrary winds in your life. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So these minister of finance cast a shadow of doubt on the word of the man of God. He cast a shadow and uh, that's what was amplified through the city of Samaria. They said it's not possible. It's not possible for uh, uh, the situation of the city to change in 24 hours. It's not possible. It's not literally possible, uh, economically, logistically. They use all the big words in the book. But the scripture says something happens with these lepers who were outside the city walls. These lepers who were outside the city walls, uh, they were the first victims of the spiritual condition of the Israelites in the city of Samaria. They were the first victims. But something happened to them. They felt the sounds of God's move. They felt the sounds of God's move in them. They were the first victims. They didn't hear the thus saith the Lord from the prophet Elisha, but because it is the sound that is being made in the spirit realm, it impacted them. The same sound impacts the elements, impacts the winds, impacts the, uh, 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 the forces of God. That same sound uh, 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 impacted their spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That same sound of God's voice, God's decisions, 
impacted them and they said to themselves, why stay we here till we die? Because they depended on the alms giving of people going in and out of the city. But now there had been a besiegement and uh, no one was going in and out of Samaria. The gates were shut. So they were inside, they were, they were outside the city walls. Nobody was giving them arms. They were at the point of death. And they said to themselves, why stay we here till we die? They had the same word. They had the same word. And they made a decision. They said to themselves, let us go to the camp of the enemy. You know, I like the way the King James puts it. He says, let us go and fall on the enemy. You know, if you, uh, some other translations um, say surrender to the enemy, but um, you got to look at the usage of that word, let us fall on the enemy throughout the scriptures. Uh, it is used to mean, let us attack the enemy. Let us fall on the enemy. Let us attack the enemy. That's the sense. Uh, 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 or, 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 or let us let us confront the enemy. Let us go and confront the enemy. If if we succeed, uh, we'll save ourselves alive. If we die, we die. Now these men decided to do something about the sounds that they felt in their spirit. They were not going to accept the condition of leprosy and impending death. They were not going to accept that as their, as their fate. They were not going to accept that. They were going to deal with that. They were going to deal with that. They felt a sense of urgency. That sense was not in the city of Samaria. Some Those in the city were plagued with death. Doubt. They doubted the thus saith the Lord. But these lepers who didn't hear Elisha, but felt what was taking place in the spirit realm, they decided to act. They said, let us go and fall on the enemy. And the scripture says, uh, uh, every step they took to confront their situation, to confront their crisis, to confront the enemy, Oh, hallelujah. Every step they took, the scripture says, God caused the sounds that were in the spirit realm, the noise of the host. Uh, so we find a reverberation, uh, the steps of the lepers. Uh, 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 they were steps of faith. So sounds of faith, the earth shook. And because they were responding to the sounds of God's move, God's movement, God's judgment, God's decision. The scripture says the Syrians who had besieged Samaria began to, to feel uh, a, uh, an earthquake, hallelujah, with every step of the, uh, these lepers uh, and also the, 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 the sounds of God's uh, host, horses, chariots in the spirit realm, angels coming. The scripture says the Syrians abandoned everything. They abandoned their tents, abandoned their horses, and they fled. And they left their supplies, their food, their everything. They fled for their lives. They fled for their lives. And so the scripture says it happened. It happened. It happened. These lepers came and found no one in the camp of the Syrians. And they ate, they drank, they took uh, uh, stuff and they went and uh, uh, gold and silver and they went and hid it. So these men, these lepers began to experience the breakthrough, the miracle, the, the, the blessing of God. Hallelujah. These lepers, because 
they will act in faith and the sounds of their faith resonated with the sound of God's movement, God's decisions, God's judgment, the elements resonating with them. And the scripture says they had the victory. What are you going through today? What is it? What is it? What is it that stands in your way? What is it that stands in your way? Is it an infirmity? Is it is it a a a a, a crisis? Very difficult challenge. The big question is, how are you responding? How do you respond to God's word that comes yeah, yeah, yeah. every every now and then, every week, every day, the word of God that is coming to you? How do you respond? Do you just hear and 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 just pacify yourself that you're listening to the word of God or it changes your way? Does it change your way? Are you paying attention to your life? What sounds are coming out of your life? Are they sounds of faith or sounds of doubt? This morning, I want us to go before God and speak to God. We don't want to be like the like like those people in Samaria who were indifferent to God's word until they were finally besieged by the Syrian army and began to live on doves' dung began to 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 destroy uh, actually they degenerated to to cannibalism one woman uh, uh, made a deal with a friend let's eat my son today and tomorrow we eat your son they resorted to cannibalism that's what happens those who are experiencing wars uh, uh, know what I'm talking about. Those who are in the region of Ukraine and, 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 and they know uh, what it means uh, uh, to be victims of war. Some of us don't know. We've never uh, 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 have been victims of war. So we do, we do not know what it, what it is like to, to, to have to flee your homes. Some of us don't know what it is like to experience a drought and and to turn the taps on the faucet on in the morning and there is no water we don't know what it looks like so uh, our attitude remains indifference some of us do not know uh, uh, what it means to be plagued by a virus and 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 to have to isolate yourself uh, from everyone for a week or two some people have actually died from this plague. It's time for order. It's time for God's people to hear the sound of God's word. It's the sound of the trumpet. This is the season of trumpets. God's people must come into alignment. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, come into alignment. Come into alignment with what God's God is saying to his people. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for the revelation of your word. I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice, uh, that faith will arise in your people. Uh, not passive faith, but active faith. I bind every spirit of apathy. We bind every spirit of indifference to your word. We bind uh, every spirit of unbelief. Go to the abyss, be chained and bound until your judgment day. I release the spirit of faith. I release the spirit of faith into the heart of God's people that God's people will, shall walk by faith and not by sight. That God's people will come out of the shadow of indifference. That God's people will, will walk by faith, talk by faith, 
act by faith in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the revelation of your word. Thank you, Father, for averting every crisis that has been determined uh, uh, on our world at this time. Thank you, Lord, for averting every crisis in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you for preserving your people by faith in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Uh, 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 thank you for coming on the line. But I want to make an announcement. Uh, next week, um, next week, uh, 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 Saturday, uh, that is August 27th, I will be hosting a Christian Wealth Seminar. All right. The Lord has laid on my heart to host a Christian wealth seminar. Uh, uh, it, it will be a seminar that will inform God's people of how to position themselves economically. There's uh, there's going to be a series of seminars, and that's going to be the first one. Is the Christian wealth seminar? I'm going to uh, uh, put the flyer on the screen now. Um, uh, so uh, August 27th, Saturday, August 27th, and the time will be 9 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time, Saturday, August 27th, uh, and the time will be 9 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time, and um, you can, uh, uh, the the address for the event will be uh, cibunet.com, C-I-B-U-N-E-T.com, C-I-B-U-N-E-T. Dot com and um, uh, uh, you can register on that site uh, uh, it's free free and then uh, you go to my presentations after you've registered you log in and then you go to my presentations and um, you can you can be a part of that event you can ask questions directly um, after the presentation and um, position yourself because so many Things are going to happen in our world, but God's people are going to be preserved. God's people are going to be preserved. You remember how that before the drought, uh, there was a drought that came uh, uh, in Israel. Elisha told the, 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 the Shunammite woman to warn her, told her of the drought and told her what to do to, to avert the drought, to 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 be spared the drought and so uh, uh she she sojourned outside the land and uh, uh, when she came back god also orchestrated the restoration of that which she had lost during the times of the drought everything she lost was restored to her so god always warns his people when there's going to be a drought, difficult times. So I want to uh, encourage you to uh, uh, be a part of that Christian Wealth Seminar. Uh, that will be uh, August 27th, uh, 9 a.m., uh, of course, this year, 2022, uh, on cibunet.com, C-I-B-U-N-E-T dot com. Uh, but right after I go off air, I will leave the flyer on the screen. God richly bless you.